Hello, hello, Magic English 8 here. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope your speaking has changed through watching these videos, among other skills. Today I am with you with another unit of Interchange Blue. So far we have covered 11 units of the book and today we are heading for unit 12. It's a long story, the title of the unit, mainly focusing on past tense events. Okay, before we start, let's head here for the main areas covered today. Unit 12, it's a long story, and the main areas covered today are storytelling, so it's about past tense, unexpected recent past events, describing recent past events and experiences and discussing someone's activities lately or recently. So the focus of the unit mainly is on past tense. Past continuous versus simple past is our first grammar part and the second one is present perfect progressive or present perfect continuous which again talks about past events. Here in the snapshot there is two stories it says true stories of incredible coincidences. Coincidences. Co means together. Incidents means happening. So coincidence means things happening simultaneously or together, usually in an unexpected way. Let's read the stories and see what they are. It says, one day the American novelist, I little enlarged for you, one day, the American novelist Anne Parrish was in a bookstore in Paris and she saw an old used copy of one of her favorite childhood books. When she opened it, she saw on the first page Anne Parrish, 209N, Weber Street, Colorado Springs. It was Anne's own book. Could it be? From the United States ending up in Paris, her own childhood book? Probably. The second story, a 10-year-old girl. You know about this hyphenated adjective. It's not 10 years old. It is a 10-year-old girl. So, let's read it. I'll talk about it to you. A 10-year-old girl named Laura Buxton released a bunch of balloons into the air. She attached a note to the balloon that asked the person who found it to write back to her. A couple of weeks later, she received a reply. It was from another 10-year-old girl, also named Laura Buxton, who lived 150 miles away. <laughs> Difficult to believe, but uh, let's talk about the 10-year-old first. So we say, how old is she? And the answer, she is 10 years old. But I could also say, she is a 10 hyphen year hyphen old girl. And without the S, a 10 year old girl. Or, for example, a 4 story apartment or a fourth story apartment building whatever hmm? so our apartment has four stories or four floors it is a four story apartment building okay hyphens come these are called hyphens hyphenated adjectives okay <clears throat> now here we have some speaking for our part. It says, which of these stories do you think is more amazing? So maybe you can say, I think this one is more amazing or hard to believe because a book is really hard to believe to end up from the United States in Paris and then her own book from her childhood bookshelf. Or you say, this one is really hard to believe because some bunch of balloons going up 105, 150 miles away and 
reaching someone else with the same name that's really difficult for me to believe whatever reason you have you can talk about that here and now for furthering our speaking here i got some questions for you you can read the question pause the video and speak or you can wait for me to read my sample response then pause and give your sample response but do it this way your speaking will improve it says do you believe in coincidences yes yes i do believe in coincidences i do believe emphasis sometimes strange things happen by chance like meeting someone unexpectedly or thinking of a friend and then they call you it's like the universe has a way of surprising us coincidences can make life interesting and sometimes even magical so this is a sample response for someone believing in coincidences you could have your own ideas in saying no and then providing the support the second question says have you ever had an experience that is hard to believe this is the story that is hard to believe one story happening to me hard to believe is when i saw a rainbow in the night sky a rainbow in the night sky that's an anomaly it was amazing i thought rainbows only came out during the day but there it was shining bright in the dark i called my friends but they didn't believe me until they saw it too it was like magic so the first line has some interesting points for me to talk about firstly if i asked you what is the verb of this sentence what do you say what is the verb of this sentence mm -hmm. you may pause the video here and think about it but the answer is the verb is this guy why because here we say one story is one story which happened to me then here we have a reduced adjective clause which and to be omitted or which omitted and ing to the end of the verb one story happening to me which was again another adjective clause here which was hard to believe or which is hard to believe these two are adjective clauses and now the main verb is one story is when i saw a rainbow in the night sky and then the rest of the story okay so this was the speaking practice we had for the snapshot and now if you are good we head for exercise two perspectives it says listen to what happened to these people check the things that have happened to you as well okay this part somehow sets the scene for our grammar which is talking about the contrast between past simple and past progressive let's listen to this part i was having lunch when i spilled a cup of coffee on my clothes mm -hmm. so some points in this sentence it says i was having lunch when i spilled cup of coffee on my clothes two verbs here was having and spilled one of them is past continuous which shows something was going on in the past and the other one is a point of time i spilled so one of these verbs is continuous i was having lunch i was eating lunch and then the other one is a point of time i spilled a cup of coffee so just have it in your mind we will talk about it in our grammar point something was going on and something else interrupted it another point here i should tell you is spill what is spill there is two words here one of them is spill and the other one is p-o-u-r pour so both of them have got somehow similar meanings with different intentions spill accidentally 
you spill a cup of coffee. This is your cup of coffee on the desk and while you're working you spill it, you hit it and then it, it spills. But pour, you pour something while cooking for example. If we head for our lineman here spill see accidentally something spills it happens accidentally but poor p o u r poor poor see the person is pouring tea into the cup teapot cup and saucer it's a great idea to enlarge your vocabulary domain and in context of similar usage so for example here it is the context of tea we need the words teapot cup and saucer and also the word pour it could be useful while speaking in exams like IELTS or TOEFL okay <clears throat> And this one. Some students have a hard time pronouncing it. They say clothes. It is close. Close. It's like the verb open close. So close. See what long man says. Close. 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 It's difficult to say clothes. So close. Clothes. Yeah. Okay. Number two. I was driving to the airport to pick up a friend, but I got a flat tire. Interesting. Again, driving is something which was continuous in the past, but getting a flat tire is something happening at a point of time. Past continuous, simple past. I was driving to the airport, to the airport, to the airport, to pick up a friend. Beautiful. To pick up a friend, but I got a flat tire. Get a flat tire. I got a flat tire. Okay, number three. I was studying for an important test when the lights went out. I was studying, past continuous, and the lights went out. So, lights went out, and the opposite of that, lights came back on. Lights went out, lights came back on. Okay, <clears throat> I was studying, and then lights went out. Number four. While I was walking down the street, I found a wallet with lots of money. Walking, past continuous, and then I found a wallet with lots of money. Good for you. Or maybe bad for you because it's a headache trying to find the owner. I was traveling in another country when I met an old school friend. Traveling? Past continuous, when I met an old school friend, met an old school friend. Sometimes pronunciation is also a problem for some learners. So you need to repeat these chunks that are difficult. I met an old school friend. I met an old school friend. Several times you need to repeat it out loud, please. I was getting off a bus when I slipped and fell on the sidewalk. For you, I was getting off a bus. Get off. Get off the bus. And then, opposite of that, get on the bus. So it could be get off the ship, get off the taxi, get off the ship, get off the airplane. But for a taxi or a car, get into a taxi and get out of a taxi. Get into a taxi, get out of a taxi, but for the bus, for the ship, for the vehicles that you can stand on, get on, get off. But this one, get into, get out of. Okay, I slipped. Like the time that you slip on a banana skin. I slipped and fell on the sidewalk. And the last one... While I was shopping one day, a celebrity walked into the store. Mm-hmm. I was shopping, 
and a celebrity walked into the store okay so this was somehow setting the scene for us to know what the past tense and past progressive tenses are now here and a part B we have some speaking practice it says choose one of the statements and continue with making a story out of it so here I have a sample for you it says I was driving to the airport to pick up a friend but I got a flat tire now from here it was so frustrating and knowing I had to pull over pull over so while you're driving pull over means go to the right side or in some other countries the other side I had to pull over to the side of the road and try to fix it fix it luckily a kind stranger stopped to help me change the tire despite the delay I eventually made it to the airport just in time to greet my friend so some point here it says I got a flat tire we talked about it frustrating and knowing I had to pull over so sometimes you're driving and the police from behind starts its alarm or sirens and then you gotta pull over to the side to the side of the road try to fix it so fix a flat tire a kind stranger stopped to help me change the tire change the tire despite the delay I eventually made it to the airport I reached the airport I made it to the airport I reached the airport just in time in time means before the last moment to greet my friend so in time made it to the airport and the other things they are the important points of this sample response and I got another one for you my friends here it says <clears throat> I was getting off the bus but I slipped and fell on the sidewalk now let's see what happened here it was embarrassing I felt ashamed while I fell off the bus so it was embarrassing I felt really clumsy awkward as people rushed to help me up thankfully I was in here badly just a few scrapes I learned to be more careful when stepping off buses especially when it's rainy or icy outside again some other points here it says it was embarrassing so be careful that embarrass and embrace are two different words embarrassing make you feel ashamed she she asked a lot of embarrassing questions oh embarrassing questions an embarrassing an embarrassing situation embarrassing situation so everybody feels ashamed of the things happening there embarrassed but there's also the word embrace embrace means hug someone so from the airport you see someone for example has flown back home you go and embrace them Jack Jack warmly embraced his son embrace okay embrace or hug embrace embarrass two different words it was embarrassing I felt really clumsy awkward as people rushed to help me up they rushed to help me up thankfully I wasn't hurt passive I wasn't hurt 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 pee pee I wasn't hurt badly just a few scrapes or scratches I learned to be more careful when stepping off buses or getting off bus especially when it is rainy or icy outside okay nice and clean exercise two also finished now grammar focus past continuous versus simple past the book says use the past continuous for an action in progress in the past simple past for an action that interrupts it so here 
I got something for you which might help you. This is the timeline of the events. Past, present, future. So in the past something was going on and then something else interrupted it. This one is past progressive or past continuous and this one is simple past. For example, I was eating dinner when he called. So eating dinner is something taking time. It needs duration of time. But he called is a point of time. He calls. My phone rang. The door rang. Okay? That is the contrast between past progressive and simple past. Here with the examples that we've covered before. I was having lunch, so it takes time. I spilled coffee. It doesn't take time. It interrupts. I was driving. I got a flat tire. Point of time. Moment. I was shopping. A celebrity walked into the store. Point of time. Okay. This is the example. And regarding the structure, this subject was where? Verb ing. Like the present continuous, which we have um, is our verb ing. Here we have was where and verb ing. Okay. Some examples here. She was having dinner at 9 last night. So I asked you, what were you doing last night at 9? I was having dinner. I was reading a book. I was preparing lunch for the day after or whatever. And they were studying when I entered the room. Entering the room is point of time. Studying takes time. It was raining all day yesterday. Past progressive. Okay? So part A, complete the sentences with the use of past simple and past progressive. My sister was texting while she was driving and she almost crashed the car. Or it could be my sister texted while she was driving and she almost crashed the car. So here, was texting or texted while she was driving. Whenever we have while, it is only continuous time. With when, it could be simple past or past continuous. But with while, only past continuous. My sister was texting while she was driving. She almost crashed the car. So almost crashed her car means she did not crash. It was so close. She had a close call. She had a close call. Yeah, that's when we say, oh, I had a close call. Means I was about to have the accident. I had a close call. I had a close call. Means I was about to have an accident. And uh, <clears throat> number two, while I was cooking dinner last night, a friend called me and I burnt the food. I was cooking, it takes time. Calling doesn't take time, point of time, and I burnt the food. Point of time. Number three, my father was skiing when he broke his leg in several places. Skiing takes time, breaking the leg doesn't take time, split second. We, number four, we, we had our first child while we were living in a tiny apartment. So, having the child. Have is one of those verbs that cannot come in continuous time. We had our child. While, number five, while I was driving in England a few years ago, I realized I was on the wrong side of the road. So driving and at a moment, oh, I realized I was on the wrong side of the road. Number six, once I was reading a good book, but someone, someone stupid enough, told me the ending. I was reading, someone told me the ending. And number seven, my parents met each other while they were working at the same restaurant in Vancouver. The beautiful Vancouver. Right. Okay, so this is the combination of simple past and past 
progressive. I hope you got it, my friends. But here, part B says, complete the sentences with information about yourself. For example, I was taking a selfie when... Let's see. I got a sample response here for you. My suggestion, please pause the video and give the sample responses. Speaking is a matter of actual language production. It's not like you watch lots of movies and then your speaking changes. No. That is the input going to your mind. Speaking is output language production. Okay? With that in mind, please pause the video and give these sample responses. I was taking a selfie when my friend photobombed me from behind. Making a funny face, it turned out to be the best selfie ever. My friend photobombed me. What does that mean? My friend photobombed me. Photobomb. Spoil a photograph. Like this one. These two are taking the picture. This guy photobombs. This one. This one. Mm -hmm. Usually in every gathering there is someone like this to photobomb this beautiful moment. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> My friend photobombed me. It turned out to be it became the best selfie ever. And uh, this one. While I was going home one day, I suddenly realized I had forgotten my keys at work. It was already late and the office was closed. I had to call a locksmith to get inside. It was such a hassle, problem, difficulty, annoyance. But thankfully, I had my phone with me to make the call. Make the call. Collocation. And who is a locksmith? Someone who opens the locks for you. Or someone who fixes locks for you. Locksmith. This person is called a locksmith. Okay, so this was... And there is another one here. I almost forgot it. Some time ago, I found an old photo album in the attic. In the attic. It was filled with memories from my childhood. Looking through the pictures brought back so many emotions and reminded me of moments I had almost forgotten. It was like taking a trip down memory lane. What a beautiful sample response. Let's read it one more time. Some time ago, I found an old photo album in the attic. What is the attic? Let's go and see. This part is called the attic of the home, usually for storage purposes. So, I found an old photo album in the attic. It was filled with memories from my childhood. Looking through the pictures brought back, brought back so many emotions. So, it brought back so many emotions. Reminded me of, remind someone of something remind someone of something so i remembered the moments but this story reminded me of the moments i had almost forgotten so almost forgotten it means i did not forget them i had almost forgotten them i barely remember them it was like taking a trip down memory lane taking a trip down my memory lane Good? Okay, so these were my sample responses. Now, you please pause the video and give your own sample responses for the part. Okay? And now here, for more grammar practice, I got some sentences for you here. You need to unscramble them, put them in order. They are the combination of simple past and past progressive. How? Was dinner I cooking when suddenly went out the power? So, did you understand the story? I was cooking dinner when suddenly the power 
went out something like this let's see here yeah I was cooking dinner when the power suddenly went out the power went out or the lights went out number two you look pause the video and try to find the answer yourself basketball they hmm, were to rain playing when did you find the answer did you they were playing basketball when it started to rain okay playing basketball takes time start of the rain doesn't take time it's not raining it is the start of the rain which is point of time this one please did you find the answer good we were walking in the park when we saw a deer when we saw a deer d w -E r deer and d e a r again deer the same pronunciation number four did you find the answer they were watching a movie when the doorbell rang watching a movie takes time ring of the doorbell does not take time and number five my friends did you find the answer good i was sleeping when the alarm went off so what happens the alarm goes off went off something beautiful for you mean started to make noise okay <clears throat> and something else let me tell you about it for example at night you set the alarm and in the morning the alarm goes off yeah set the alarm then in the morning the alarm goes off so I feel you are good with this grammar I hope you found out about it and you can use it and right now it's our time to head for exercise 4 the listening how did it all begin okay the story of Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg let's listen to the part taking some notes and putting these events in order from 1 to Eight. Okay, let's go. Around 15 years ago, Mark Zuckerberg was a normal high school student. He was living in a quiet town in New York. Today, he is the founder and CEO of Facebook, the world's most popular social networking site. So how did it all begin? When Zuckerberg was only 10 years old, he was already writing computer programs. His father taught him how to program computers, and he loved it. A couple of years later, he wrote his very own messenger program. His program, ZuckNet, connected the computers in his home to the computers in his father's office. While he was studying in high school, he developed a computer program that looked at people's favorite music and recommended new music. Microsoft wanted to buy the program, but Zuckerberg did not accept the offer. In 2002, he entered Harvard University. One night, while he was playing on his computer, he invented a program called FaceMash. FaceMash compared pictures of Harvard students. The program was a success, but the university shut down the site a couple of days later. Many people at Harvard now knew who Zuckerberg was. Three classmates asked for his help to develop a social networking site for Harvard students. While he was working on that site, he got the idea for Facebook. At first, Facebook was only for Harvard students, but soon people from other universities were using it. Zuckerberg wanted more people to use Facebook, but he needed more money. His friends were also interested in Facebook. Coincidentally, they had the money he needed to create the site. They invested in the site, and Facebook expanded so that anyone who was 13 or older could use it. Today, Mark Zuckerberg lives in California, where he is the chief executive of Facebook. Over one billion people use Facebook today, 
and Zuckerberg is worth over $24 billion. Nice, nice, $24 billion in 15 years. Of course, it's not just 15 years. It's a lot of talents and ideas behind that as well. So the sequence of the event, Zuckerberg started writing computer programs at the age of 10. Nice. Zuckerberg wrote his very own messenger program, number two. Number three, he created a program that recommended music. Number four, didn't accept Microsoft's offer. Number five, invented face smash. Number six, three classmates asked for his help. Number seven, his friends invented in Facebook. And number eight, became available to the public, Facebook. Okay, so that was the story of Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg. One more time, let's listen to it. Maybe it has words and things for us to focus on. Okay, let's go. Put the sentences. Around 15 years ago, Mark Zuckerberg was a normal high school student. He was living in a quiet town in New York. Today, he is the founder and CEO of Facebook. So, founder and CEO of Facebook. Founder and CEO. Founder is the one who starts found, the verb, which means establish, and founder, someone who establishes a company or something, and CEO, chief executive officer, chief executive officer, or means the main boss or the head of the company, founder and CEO of Facebook. The world's most popular social networking site. So how did it all begin? When Zuckerberg was only 10 years old, he was already writing computer programs. Mm -hmm. He was already writing computer programs. His father taught him how to program computer. His father taught him. His father taught him how to. So some students pronounce it wrong. His father taught him how to program computers. His father taught him. It's not taught him. Taught him. And here this H is not strongly pronounced. So his father taught him how to program. Let's one more time listen to Already it. writing computer programs. His father taught him how to program computers. Taught him how to program computers. And he loved it. A couple of years later, he wrote his very own messenger program. His program, Zucknet, connected the computers in his home to the computers in his father's office. Mm -hmm. While he was studying in high school, he developed a computer program that... He developed a computer program. Looked at people's favorite music and recommended new music. Microsoft wanted to buy the program, but Zuckerberg did not accept the offer. Nice, did not accept the offer, because the is followed by a vowel sound, it's not pronounced the offer. He didn't, didn't accept the offer. Whenever the is followed by a vowel sound, it is not pronounced the. Is pronounced the. He did not accept the offer. In 2002, he entered Harvard University. One night, while he was playing on his computer, he invented a program called FaceMash. FaceMash compared pictures of Harvard students. The program was a success, but the university shut down the site a couple of days later. Many people at Harvard now knew who Zuckerberg was. Three classmates asked for his help to develop a social networking site for Harvard students. Mm -hmm. Develop a social networking site? While he was working on that site, he got the idea for Facebook. He got the idea for Facebook. He got the idea for Facebook. At first, Facebook was only for Harvard students. But soon, people from other universities were using it. Zuckerberg wanted more people to use Facebook, but he needed more money. His friends were also interested in Facebook. 
Coincidentally, they had the money he needed to create the site. Mm -hmm. Coincidentally, he ha they had the money he needed. They invested in the site and fit. They invested. Invest in something. Invest in something. Spend on something. Careful. Facebook expanded so that anyone who was 13 or older could use it. Today, Mark Zuckerberg lives in California, where he is the chief executive of Facebook. Chief executive of it or chief CEO. Over one billion people use Facebook today, and Zuckerberg is worth over 24 billion dollars. Zuckerberg is worth over 24 billion dollars. So something is worth, for example, here we have 24 billion dollars or whatever. 24 billion dollars. Someone is worth 24 billion dollars. Something is worth to be worth. Okay. And this was the listening and finished. Now, for furthering our speaking, here we have a question. Think of other websites and apps that were successful inventions. So, can you think of a website that is a successful invention or an app that is a successful invention? You say, yes, I think this website is a successful in invention. And then you bring your support for that. Why? Here, I got my sample response for YouTube. It says, I think a website that has been successful is YouTube. It has revolutionized changed how people consume video content and has become a go-to platform a platform that everybody refers to for entertainment education and communication with a vast array of content ranging from music videos to tutorials youtube has captured the attention of billions of users worldwide and has spawned countless careers for content creators oh what a sample response what a sample response let's read it one more time it says i think a website that has been successful is youtube it has revolutionized so change something completely we have the word revolution means the change of the regime or government in a country revolutionize a complete change how people consume video content, use video content, has become a go-to platform, useful, a go-to platform, a go-to person, a go-to, whatever, for entertainment, education, and communication with a vast array of, a vast array of, a diverse range of content, ranging from this to that, ranging from this, to that youtube has captured the attention of capture the attention of beautiful billions of users your worldwide and has spawned countless careers has started countless careers for content creators okay spawn here means start so a go to a vast array of ranging from this to that and capture the attention of these were the beautiful things in the sample response i suggest you transfer them into your vocabulary notebook and if you're good now <clears throat> let's head for exercise five and word power so a list of some adverbs these adverbs some could be positive in meaning some negative and some neutral or it could be either of them sometimes positive sometimes negative let's just read them for the sake of pronunciation once please repeat with me coincidentally 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 fortunately luckily miraculously are you repeating with me the word is miracle miraculous miraculously miraculously means unbelievably like a miracle 
sadly, strangely, suddenly. It is suddenly. It is not suddenly. Suddenly. There is nothing between d and n. This vowel is not pronounced. Suddenly. Surprisingly. Unexpectedly. And unfortunately. Okay? You got it? So this is regarding the pronunciation. Now, which ones are positive? The positive ones are fortunately, luckily, and miraculously. These have positive connotation in their meaning. Which ones are negative? Sadly and unfortunately. These have negative connotation. And the rest could be, depending on the context, positive or negative. Okay? So, this is the story of these adverbs. Some of them are not difficult for you. For example, sadly, luckily, fortunately, strangely, suddenly, surprisingly, unfortunately. These are not difficult. Maybe the new ones are miraculously, coincidentally. Miraculously, coincidentally. So, I suggest you transfer them into your vocabulary notebook. And now, here in part B, for our speaking practice, it says... <clears throat> Complete the statements below with the use of some of these adverbs. For example, we were having a party when... I was walking down the streets when... And it started out as a normal day, but... So, I have selected this one, number one and number three, and have written stories for them. It says... We were having a party when suddenly the power went out. The power went out, the power came back on. It was pitch black, 100% black, pitch black. And everyone started laughing nervously. Fortunately, someone found some candles and we lit them up. So some candles and we lit them up, light, lit. We lit them up, turning the situation into an impromptu candlelight party it was surprisingly fun dancing and chatting by candlelight until the power came back on so again some words in this part here it says pitch black 100% black and here it says some found some candles lit them up so light candles light up L-I-G-H-D, light up candles, lit them up. Mm -hmm. So if you know the word candle, it's a good idea to know how you can use the candle. The verb for that is light up, light the candle up. Turning the situation, reduced adjective clause, which turned the situation into an impromptu. Impromptu. What is impromptu? Impromptu means unplanned means it just happened happened done or said without any preparation impromptu 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 the band the band gave an impromptu concert the band gave an impromptu concert interestingly the adverb is also impromptu impromptu so without preparation and impromptu candlelight party it was surprisingly fun dancing and chatting by candlelight until the power came back on and the second one it started out as a normal day but surprisingly as I was walking to work I bumped into an old friend I hadn't seen in years I hadn't seen in years coincidentally we were both heading to the same cafe head for or head to means going towards we caught up over coffee we talked about the past sharing stories and reminiscing about old times reminiscing about old times reminisce means remember sweet memories of remember the good time of a past tense i will look it up in the dictionary for you it was a pleasant surprise that brightened an otherwise ordinary day. Beautiful, beautiful. 
it brightened an otherwise ordinary day so an otherwise ordinary day means if it hadn't happened it would be an ordinary day and it brightened it made the day so pleasant for us reminiscent what about that reminisce 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 to talk or think about pleasant events mm -hmm. a group of former students reminiscing about their college days reminiscing about their college days reminiscing about their college days remember recall yeah reminisce and here we had lighten which was beautiful so reminisce about something lightened and otherwise ordinary day beautiful beautiful transfer it into your vocabulary notebook review it over and over and hopefully you will produce this language on the day of your IELTS or TOEFL exam okay so exercise 5 word power also finished if you are good we head for the writing exercise 6 what's your story write a short story about something that happened to you recently using some of the adverbs in the previous exercise so it says the story that has happened to you recently it means past tense okay you can use simple past you can use past progressive you can use present perfect all of them talk about past tense my story something like this recently I was out for a walk when suddenly a stray puppy appeared out of nowhere looking lost and frightened so a stray puppy a wandering puppy a puppy without any owner looking lost and frightened surprisingly it ran straight towards me wagging its tail eagerly fortunately I had some dog treats dog food in my pocket which I offered to the little pup puppy pup miraculously it calmed down instantly it the puppy calmed down instantly allowing me which allowed me reduced adjective flaws allowing me to check its color for any contact information color around a dog's neck allowing me to check its color c-o-l-l-a-r careful for any contact information sadly there was none no information so I ended up taking the puppy home where it now happily resides lives as a cherished member of our family a loved member of our family so interesting words of this writing it says <clears throat> I was out for a walk when suddenly a stray puppy a puppy without any owner a stray puppy stray cats for example out of nowhere I don't know where it came from out of nowhere looking lost and frightened surprisingly it ran straight towards me wagging its tail eagerly fortunately I had some dog treats in my pocket which I offered to the little pup to the little pup we talked about it before the miraculously it calmed down instantly allowing me to check its color for any contact information there was none so I ended up taking the puppy home I ended up doing this means this happened this way I ended up taking the puppy home means so I took the puppy home where it now happily resides resident residence reside lives as a cherished member of our family a cherished member of a cherished member so transfer these chunks into your vocabulary notebook not just a cherished a cherished member of our family okay this was my story maybe you can write your own and also you can use it to improve your speaking just give this this sample verbally it would contribute to your speaking exercise 7 conversation what have you been doing so please just look at this picture I want you not to be reading the text and use your own memory to guess 
So in this picture, I got questions for you. Here it says, where are these people? What do you well, what do they look like? And do you think it is their first meeting? So let's take a look. Firstly, where are they? My suggestion is you pause the video and answer these questions for your speaking. So the answer is they seem to be at a party and uh, the boy has worn some casual clothes and the girl has kind of dressed up with that black dress and high heels and do you think it's their first time visiting each other to me yes why because they have some sort of distance with each other and it doesn't seem to be they are close friends to each other so this is my guess based on this picture now you could have your own guesses as well but focus question before i play the listening for you what are steve and louisa doing so what are they doing how long have they been doing these things let's see what have you been doing part a listen and practice please take notes hey louisa I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been doing lately? I haven't been going out much. I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How come? I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've only been spending money. I've been trying to become an actor. I've been taking courses and going to a lot of auditions. Really? How long have you been trying? since I graduated, but I haven't had any luck yet. No one recognizes my talent. Poor you. So you got it? <clears throat> what is Steve doing? Please pause the video and say, what is Lisa doing? Steve has been spending money because he wants to get into acting and Sadly enough, no one recognizes his talents based on what he says. He's been going to several auditions. And Luisa, she's been saving up money. Why? Because she wanted to take a trip to Morocco. And she's had two jobs. Okay, <clears throat> so let's go and look at the conversation now. Let's listen to the part again. Talking about it's important. Practice. Words. Hey, Louisa, I haven't seen you in ages. I haven't seen you in ages. So in ages means for a long time. I haven't seen you for a long time. I haven't seen you in ages. In ages means for a long time. What have you been doing lately? What have you been doing lately, yeah? What have you been doing recently? I haven't been going out much. I've been working two jobs for the last six months. Mm -hmm. So look at the sentences, they are all present perfect progressive. I haven't been going out means since the past six months till now, I haven't gone out that much. Present, perfect, continuous, talking about something starting in the past and continuing to the present. I've been working two jobs. Means six months ago, I started and I have been working the two jobs over the past six months. How come? How come? Why? Explain. I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Present continuous. I am saving up money. Now, question. Can we use present perfect for this one? Present perfect progressive? Yes. I've been saving up some money. I've been saving up money. It's possible. So, don't fear that, oh, why here it's just present continuous? Can I use present perfect continuous? Yes. It's not like mathematics with merely one answer. It is language. It un it's under the area of art with several possible answers. Okay. 
Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've only been spending money. I've only been spending money means in this time I have just done that. Present perfect progressive or continuous. I've been trying to become an actor. Again, in this time period I have tried. I've been taking courses and going to a lot of auditions. The same story, going to a lot of auditions, so practice before they accept you or performance before they accept you. Audition. Audition is the time you are an actor, you are a musician, go perform so they decide that you are good or not. Really? How long have you been trying? Since I graduated. How long have you been trying? Present perfect question. How long have you been doing that? How long have you been studying? How long have you been working here? But I haven't had any luck yet. No one recognizes my talent. Oh, no one understands how talented I am. No one sees me. Okay, so this was the conversation with the primary focus on present perfect progressive. Now, part B, let's listen and see what it is. Page 81, exercise 7, part B. Listen to two other people at the party. So there are two other people at the party. What has happened since they last saw each other? Mm -hmm. So please take notes. Give me a summary of that. After that, we will listen to it and talk about the language it's got. Okay, let's go. Hey, Bob. How's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been looking for a house to buy. I finally found one last month. That's terrific. Yeah, I'm really tired of renting. So what have you been doing lately? Well, I went to Italy last month. Really? What were you doing there? I was taking a short Italian course. But guess what? I fell in love. You did? Who's the lucky guy? Actually, I fell in love with the food there. So I've been taking some classes in Italian cooking. That pizza you're eating? I made it. Good. So what is the summary if you want to give me? My summary. Dubai has bought a house and has got lots of mortgage probably on that. And uh, he's really tired of renting. The girl on the other hand has been taking a trip to Italy and she has kind of fallen in love with the food there so she's taking a course on that as well okay one more time let's listen there were some parts we need to talk each about. other hey bob how's it going pretty good thanks how's it going you know about that i haven't seen you for a while i haven't i haven't seen you for a while what have you been up to what have you been up to What have you been up to? What have you been up to? What have you been doing? What have you been doing? Well, I've been looking for a house to buy. I've been looking for a house to buy. So what does this sentence mean? I've been looking for a house to buy. I've been looking for a house to buy. It means since some months ago or a while ago till now I've been looking. I finally found one last month. That's terrific. Yeah, I'm really tired of renting. So what have you been doing lately? What have you been doing lately? What have you been up to? Well, I went to Italy last month. Really? What were you doing there? I was taking a short Italian course, but Guess what? I fell in love. <laughs> Guess what? I fell in love. Fall in love. Usually you fall in love with someone. So that's why the guy says, who's the lucky guy? You did? Who's the lucky guy? Actually, I fell in love with the food there. So I've been taking some classes in Italian cooking. I've been taking some classes. That pizza you're eating? I made it. <laughs> Good for you. After taking so much courses and now a pizza. <laughs> Good. So this is the story of present. Perfect 
progressive that somehow we talked about it and now the grammar focus talks about that present perfect continuous it says use the present perfect continuous for actions that start in the past and continue to the present let me tell you about it you remember present perfect it had three applications one of the uses present perfect something happening in the past at an indefinite time the time is not important the action is important for example have you ever eaten lobster have you seen a giraffe you can say yeah I've seen a giraffe once this action is so important that you don't talk about the time or the place or the other details in present perfect application two of present perfect not present perfect continuous present perfect is something happening several times in the past I've seen this movie several times I've read this book three times present perfect the third use of present perfect is something starting in the past continuing till present for example I've studied English for two years the same meaning could be present perfect continuous with a little emphasis on the continuity of the action how I've studied English for two years or I've been studying English for two years I don't know why it doesn't finish so for a reason you are putting some extra emphasis on the continuity of the action this is the story of present perfect continuous something starting in the past and continuing to the present the structure subject have has been verb ing i've been example i've been studying spanish for the past six months and i feel like i'm making good progress make progress collocation okay so studying started six months ago and it's continuing She's been working on her novel since last year and she's finally nearing the end. Near as a verb means getting close to. So she's been working on. Work is a verb that can have duration. Not all the verbs can have duration. I will talk about that. She's been practicing her guitar lately. Sorry, she hasn't been practicing. We've been renovating our house for weeks and it's starting to look amazing. So renovation takes time. Means changing your house interior mostly, making some updates into it. So that is called renovation. It's like fixing the old houses. They have been practicing the piano every day hoping to perfect their performance for the recital perfect as a verb here the stress is on the second syllable if it is an adjective perfect first syllable if it is a verb perfect their performance for the recital they have a performance they haven't been working on their project for the past few weeks so it could be negative present perfect continuous they haven't been working and he's been searching for a new job tirelessly but hasn't had any luck yet he's been searching for a new job tirelessly beautiful okay so this was some examples with present perfect but i told you present perfect continuous means something started in the past and continues continues some verbs cannot have any duration or any continuity in their meaning like she's been cutting herself what does that mean she started cutting herself and sh still she's doing that doesn't make sense so this sentence is incorrect she cut herself last night while chopping some meat she cut herself simple path it hap happens at a point of time they've been breaking the glass if a piece of glass is getting broken it happens at a point of time it doesn't need duration so this sentence is incorrect they've broken the glass or they broke the glass simple past 
the phone has been falling off the table. How long does it take for the phone to fall off the table? It happens at one second or less than that. So this sentence is incorrect. The phone fell off the table. So these three sentences are incorrect. I want to demonstrate the fact that not every verb can be used in every verb tense. It depends on the meaning. So depending on the meaning, we can also work it out, fall off. Why? When in an example, it takes long time. For example, someone is jumping off an airplane. For example, a parachuter. We say the parachuter has been falling off the plane for eight minutes. So it takes time. But the phone falling off the table, it doesn't make sense. Consider the meaning, my friends. Okay? Good. Now here, we got this example, this exercise. It says complete the conversation with the present perfect continuous. Let's go for it. Learn. Question. Have you, a little enlarging it for you. Have you been learning any new skills this year? Yes, I have. I've been taking some art courses. What have you been doing lately? Well, I've been looking for a job. Means it's some months or some weeks that I am looking for a job. How have you been feeling recently? How have you been feeling recently? Great! I've been running three times a week. And I've not been drinking as much coffee since I stopped working at the coffee shop. Negative. I've not been drinking. And number four. Have you been getting enough exercise lately? No, I haven't. I've been studying for a big exam. A lot for a big exam. So I've been studying. Present perfect examples. Okay, you got it? Good. And now, off to the pronunciation. Not a difficult exercise, but let's take a look at that. Contrastive stress. Contrastive stress is simple. In every language, it is the same. It is the extra emphasis you put in order to show your meaning, your intention. How? It says, has your brother been studying German? No, I've been studying German. So, contrastive stress. Or, it could be on German. For example, has your brother been studying German? No, he's been studying French. It could be on studying. Has your brother been studying German? No, my brother has been teaching German. Or on brother. Has your brother been studying German? No, my sister has been studying German. Okay, so it's not very difficult. You got it? Let's move. Here, part B, it says, Have you been studying for 10 years? No, I've been studying for 2 years. Have you been studying at school? No, I've been studying at home. Contrastive stress. Not difficult. Exercise 10. Tell me about it. Now, let's talk about these occasions. It says, have you been traveling lately? Watching any good TV series lately? Taking any lessons lately? Working out? Working long hours, going out a lot, and staying up late. Have you been staying up late lately? Late lately? Interesting. Now, you can pause the video here and answer. Have you been traveling lately? Pause the video and say, yes, I've been traveling lately. I've gone south of Asia. I've done this. I've done that. And my sample response. Have you been traveling lately? Over the past few months, I've had the opportunity to visit several countries in Europe. It's been an incredible experience, beautiful, incredible experience, immersing myself in different cultures. So immerse, drown, means to be fully in exposure of something. <clears throat> Trying new foods and exploring historic landmarks. Traveling has broadened my perspective and provided me with the unforgettable memories.
very beautiful yeah so a beautiful sample response for traveling it says i had the opportunity to visit several countries in europe it's been an incredible experience beautiful chunk incredible experience immersing myself in different cultures trying new food exploring historic landmarks you know what it is traveling has broadened my perspective perspective vision it has broadened has opened has widened my perspective my outlook my vision and provided me with unforgettable memories again another beautiful chunk transfer them into your vocabulary not back and <clears throat> this one have you been staying up late recently yes with work deadlines and other commitments commitments responsibilities i find myself burning the midnight oil burning the midnight oil means staying up late and working or studying more often than i like however i'm trying to prioritize better sleep habits to ensure i stay healthy and energized throughout the day if possible of course okay so burn the midnight oil was beautiful commitment is a beautiful word prioritize means put important things first and then the unimportant things after prioritize stay healthy and energized during the day okay so that was the sample response of speaking and finally exercise 12 the reading of the unit so for better quality i have had it typed before the title says breaking down the sound of silence interesting title let's read and see what it is <clears throat> it says Ten years before he died, the composer Beethoven went deaf. Go deaf, went deaf. He called his disability his nightmare. Because for Beethoven, a composer, of course, the ears are the most important things. Fortunately for thousands of classical music fans, he didn't stop writing brilliant music. Brilliant music. Beautiful music. Good music. 180 years later, being deaf hasn't stopped three Americans, Steve Longo, Ed Chevy, and Bob Hilterman, from playing music. So, they are also deaf, but it hasn't stopped them from playing music either. In their case, the music is rock. Beethoven, classical. They, rock. And their band is called Beethoven's nightmare so you know the meaning of nightmare a bad dream the three boys grew up in different cities but they all showed up a surprising interest in music although they couldn't hear it they were amazed by the energy of 1960s bands like the Beatles they could see the effects the music had on the audiences the happy faces of friends and family as they watched. Something exciting was obviously happening. Quotation, it means someone has said this sentence. I'm going to do that too, they all said. Why? You can't hear, asked parents, teachers and friends alike. Alike and friends like that. Each boy used sign language, sign language, to answer, because I can feel it. That's what they say. So, you are deaf. Why are you composing music? I can feel it. Longo and Chevy started playing the guitar. For musical instruments, we say the. Play the guitar, the violin, the harmonica. They put on headphones. They put on headphones, they wore headphones, and turned up the volume. With the help of powerful hearing aids, they could get some of the notes. The rest they felt through vibrations. Drummer Hilterman 
came from a musical family. His parents thought that teaching their son to play an instrument was a waste of time. But they changed their minds after he nearly drove them crazy. Drive someone crazy. Make them mad. Angry by using knives and forks to drum on the furniture of the house. So he used knives and forks to drum on the furniture of the house. The three men <clears throat> first met in college in Washington, D.C. They started a band and played many concerts until they graduated in 1975. In 2001, Hill Durman had an idea to bring his old friends together again. They have been performing ever since. So in 2001, they got together and started to perform. In 2013, a new member, Paul Racy, joined the band as a singer. At concerts, dancers put on a spectacular show and used sign language to explain the words of the songs to the audience. So they put on spectacular show. They perform a show. Put on a show means have a show perform a show and of course the band plays very loudly the group has encouraged many deaf people and people with other disabilities to follow their dreams Shelby says the only thing deaf people can't do is hear the other things we can do so why to stop very beautiful and very inspiring so if you got some sort of disability you I don't mean you anyone they should follow their dreams. Never give up. Never give up. Good. I like this reading. Okay. And here, excise B, read the article and choose the words. After going deaf, Beethoven continued to compose music. The boys knew music was powerful because of something they could. They saw. Many people didn't understand the boy's ambition to play music. Hilderman's parents didn't want him to learn to play at first. At first. The three young men started playing together before finishing college. Yes. Okay. And uh, this part answered the questions. Which band inspired them? The Beatles. What did Longo and Chevy use to hear? Headphones. What did Helterman use to make noise and out? Knives and forks. Where did the three men get to know each other? At College Washington. And when did Beethoven's Nightmare start playing in 2001? Good. Now, part D and our speaking. Do you think it's difficult for people in your country to achieve their dreams? You, based on your country. Pause the video and give your sample response. Yes, it is difficult for people of my country to achieve their dreams because... No, it's not difficult because... What new technology and facilities make it easier for people to achieve their dreams? My sample response is... Do you think it's difficult for people of the country to achieve their dreams? I didn't talk about any special country in particular. I said yes. I believe it can be challenging for people in my country to achieve their dreams due to various factors because of various factors such as limited resources, beautiful chunk, and opportunities. However, advancement in technology have started to make things easier. Access to the internet and mobile devices has increased providing more information and connectivity. Additionally, also, developments in online learning platforms and remote work opportunities offer new avenues for pursuing aspirations. Very beautiful. It offers new avenues for doing something. It gives new ways, new possibilities, new opportunities okay so that was the sample response for uh, <clears throat> making progress in your country if it is easy or difficult and uh, what opportunities are available or what uh, 
technologies have made it easier for you to follow your dreams okay and that means our unit finished so i hope you have enjoyed it but before we wrap it up let's go and review see what we did today it was unit 12 of blue interchange we talked about the hyphenated adjective a 10 year old girl not years old here we had do before a verb for emphasis <clears throat> we talked about the difference between spill and pour this one is good that one is not good go out for the lights come back on for the bus get on the bus get off the bus taxi get into get out of here it says make it to the airport reach the airport in time we talked about it past continuous and simple past we talked about the distinction one of them has continuity the other one is just a point of time close called and uh, here make a call make a phone call remind someone of something means the person remembers that here under grammar we unscramble the sentences for the alarm we say set the alarm at night and the alarm in the morning goes off found as a verb means start establish founder someone who establishes a company like mark zuckerberg founder of facebook ceo we talked about it invest in something spend on something someone or something is worth to be worth some money a go-to platform a vast array of large array of a range of ranging from this to that we talked about it capture the attention of we talked about it reminisce about remember the sweet time of the past brighten an otherwise ordinary day brighten make it more beautiful a stray puppy stray animals cherished member of lovely member of the conversation in ages we talked about that fall in love you know about it present perfect continuous we talked about it as well and the examples tirelessly this was beautiful i told you that not all the verbs can be used in continuous form it depends on the meaning under speaking we had this an incredible experience beautiful broaden my perspective unforgettable memories burning the midnight oil and prioritize to put something in the order of importance he went deaf he became deaf drive them crazy drive someone crazy make them angry put on a show put on a show al pacino in scent of a woman says what kind of show are you putting on here hmm? are you having here and limited resources and opportunities we have offer new avenues for something and finito my friends okay that was the end of unit 12 of blue interchange so i hope that you have enjoyed the lesson in case you loved it please send it to your friends invite them to come and also join the channel and if you haven't still subscribed please kindly do so it is useful for my channel i hope you have a brilliant day ahead of yourself take really good care and bye